What I want to talk about when we get to live sports for schools is before I get into the technical stuff, we always do a little pre-show on what's out there. So I appreciate the people are tuning in. I want to talk about sports working with other areas in the school, the communications department, the business department, the theater department, the AV department, and sports. A lot of times what you guys can do is pull your resources together in order to make live streaming happen. What do I mean by that? Maybe you guys want to update everything. You want to get something like a new tech TriCast or a Wirecast gear, a bunch of PTZ cameras, and maybe your wish list is $25,000. Well, maybe the athletic department doesn't have all $25,000. Let's talk to the theater department. Let's talk to the business department. Let's talk to the communications, social studies. What other groups, journalism, can we pull funds to have access to all this really cool technology? And on the flip side, if you're coming at it from the other side, if you want to redo your media lab or your studio in your school, but you don't have the budget, maybe by letting the sports team have access to the same gear and use it with you is a way to pool your resources and make it a better, give you the ability to have an even better live sports production solution because you're not just doing it for sports, you're going to use it for other things that happen in the school, obviously, anything they can do, if you could do a basketball game in the gym, and we'll get to that a little later, well, you could also do a musical event, the play, whatever it is, that gear can be moved around, you can use it for multiple purposes. So I just wanted to go into that a little bit. Well, today's show is about sports. It's really an opportunity for all educators to get more into live streaming. So Adam, am I okay to start the show? Absolutely. Awesome. So. Live sports in schools means different things to different schools. And what do I mean by that is, is every school at every level treats sports differently. It might be that you need live sports for your middle school, or maybe your little league teams play on your fields and you want to start broadcasting some of their games and also with your own games. Maybe you're a high school program or varsity program. Colleges is every level. There's community colleges, local schools, and there's D1, D2, D3 level schools, whatever level sports you're doing in an educational setting, we can help you figure out what is the right sports solution for your budget. And in this show, we're really going to start at the beginning and work our way up to what some of the higher end productions are. But before I get into that, I want to point out this really cool stuff that's on the side of me here. And that's the schedule we have for today and next week on the show. So as Jim mentioned, later today after I'm done, we're going to have new tech on, and they're going to do a really great, amazing show on their three-play technology. And then we're going to have Live View. George from Live View is going to be on. He's going to be telling you all about their technology. And we got the little Live View basketball here, which is really cool. And then next Tuesday, March 15th, we're going to have the folks from Bird Dog and the folks from MRMC and PTC Optics all on the show. So it's not too late to sign up. It's a great thing. We love it. We're happy to be doing the edu stream. And like I said, last show we had over 100 people. Let's see if we can get even higher this show. And for those of you watching this on YouTube or Facebook, or wherever it's living later, you can log in still for today's show and the next show at, at edustreamtv.com. What do you need for live sports production? Well, it really depends what level of stuff you want to do. Number one is, you need a camcorder and some kind of encoder to stream the games out. Now, we're going to tell you that doing a single camera gets you going. But the real way to take it to the next level is multiple cameras. And the next level after that is to add branding and graphics that you know identify your school. The next level after that, let's add the scoreboard. And if we want to take it all the way to 11, let's get instant replay going. So it's the different levels. That's kind of be, going to be our theme here, where I think everyone aspires to have graphics and instant replay. But you don't have to be there to get started doing more with your live sports and streaming your live sports. And the beauty of streaming your live sports yourself is you don't have to depend on your local cable operator, news, or anything. And through the live sports, you can get exposure for your athletes and your teams to their audience, and you can allow family members from out of town to see what's going. You can also allow scouts and other people from out of town to see your kids playing and doing what, they, what they're doing. So let's talk about the basic first step. Stream and recording games, what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need some kind of cameras, and we, you can use a handheld camera or PTZ cameras. You need some kind of switcher if you're going to be doing multiple 
cameras at the same time. You need some kind of encoder that lets you do those streams. Now the encoder can go to Facebook or YouTube or there's encoders through other third party CDNs that can allow you to go directly to your school's homepage or a special page you have on your, on your school or into different things that your school is a part of through uh, there's a lot of streaming services now that'll take like high school or college sports, you know, you allow them to stream your game and they give you revenue back. It's a, it's a whole cool model and we'll, we'll get into that a little later. And then also one of the things that you see on this screen is the Live View Solo Encoder. And I want to talk about that more because one of the biggest complaints that we hear from a high school is that, hey, I'm out here, I, I, I stream sports. The problem is, is our football field or our baseball field is literally across the street from the high school. We don't have Wi-Fi, we don't have internet. How do we stream our sports from there? Well, the great way to do it is the Live View Solo. The Live View Solo is a fantastic encoder that lets you go to Facebook, YouTube, or any CDN of your choice. But what's amazing about it is it uses cellular technology. How does it use that technology? It binds two cellular signals together. So that means basically you can have a cellular modem that's on, say, Verizon, and a cellular modem that's on AT&T, and then what happens is, is those two modems send it up to the Live View Cloud, their LRT technology builds that signal together from the two different modems and allows you to go out to wherever you want to go. That means you could bring your bandwidth anywhere. If you can use a cell phone, you can get high quality video. But now people say, well, why don't I just use my cell phone to stream? Well, the problem with a cell phone is, is it's very susceptible to interruptions in the quality of the stream. So the beauty of using a Live View Solo is not only does it bind through cellular binding the, the two signals, but you get a level of redundancy too. So let's say one signal is great and it's more than enough to get your HD feed up there. That's great, but if you have the other signal up there, now what will happen is it'll load balance through their LTR technology so that your stream is always at perfect HD quality. The Live View encoder, you just plug in your camera. There is an HDMI version or an HDMI and SDI version that comes in. And by using that encoder, you can put video up to the cloud, out into a CDN from anywhere where cell phones work. You don't need special wiring. It is fantastic for football fields, baseball fields, soccer fields, or maybe you go into a hockey ice rink that you share that doesn't have internet in it because it's a hockey ice rink that's used by the whole public. So many opportunities there. This isn't really a product show, but I think it's important for people in the education space to know that with the Live View Solo, two modems and, an, and, a, and a data plan, you could be delivering HD quality from anywhere. That's not just sports, anywhere. Not just for sports, but anytime you will need to stream an event. Now what a lot of people say is, Gary, in the beginning of the show, you said we want multiple cameras. How do I use the Live View Solo with multiple cameras? It's easy. You put an inexpensive mixer in it, like this mixer from RGB Link, which has four HDMI inputs. Now I can have two, three, four cameras coming into that, the HDMI output of that going into the Live View Solo, and I can produce a show. I'm going to need some power, going to need some cables, but it's going to work great. The cool thing about the RGB Link, why we like it, is actually the, the Mini Pro will allow you to control those PTC cameras. We're going to go into PTC cameras a little bit more when we go over some outli uh, some schematics of where you would put camera placement for doing you know, different type of sporting events. So that's one thing to look at. And then step it up another level, a tremendous product we're selling that has gotten such a strong foothold in education is the YOLO box, and especially the new YOLO box pro. The YOLO box is a dedicated Android device. It's a seven inch touchscreen that gives you three HDMI inputs. It'll stream to Facebook, YouTube, or any custom RT RTPM stream, RTMP stream, and you can do multiple streams at the same time. It'll work with a scoreboard. It's got a scoreboard, uh, capability and graphics capability so you can actually produce an entire sporting event from this little box and you can plug a sim card in so you can stream directly from the field or you can have the output of it through hdmi go to a live view solo it also works as an encoder with wired or wi-fi in your buildings so let's talk about sports and how we could set it up you know one of the most popular sports that people say they want to do is uh Basketball, something in the basketball court. And that could also be volleyball or any sport that you're playing in your inside, you know, gymnasium. So this is kind of what we think is an ideal solution for basketball. What you want to have is your, your cameras behind each 
each bucket, you know, to show the action. If those can be on top of the baskets, even better. Something on the middle of the field, uh, middle of the, right on the center court, so you can pan left to right to follow the action on a wide shot. And then ideally what you also want is that fourth camera that we're calling the hero cam. That's the camera that maybe, you, you know, you're putting it on your star point guard or your center. Or if you don't have that star player, you used to say, well, this is the camera that we're going to focus on. We're going to zoom on this camera. The guy's going to move around and this camera is going to be primarily on us scoring. So we'll put it on our end to give another angle. So if we get that great play, we not only have the wide angle and the angle from above the brim, we have the side angle. Now, I mentioned PTZ cameras. I want to bring that up because easily those cameras that we are showing on each end of um, Vanna White, each end over there and the other one, that could be a PTZ camera or remote controlled camera that could be on a fixed shot or a couple of different preset shots that you can use during the game. And now you don't have a camera operator, you can have that camera up there. The Hero Cam, I always recommend being a camera that is a human being on the camera because I think it's really important that the person can see the flow of the game and you know they, they gotta be able to react faster. And that other, the other thing is the mid-court camera can be a fixed camera, it can be a PTZ camera, or it can be a fixed camera that is back enough and high enough in the room that you can get the whole field of play where you are. But that's also something that a lot of people have tried using PTZ cameras where they really just basically have three, P, three presets for the camera. There's straight ahead middle, left or right, and they're using it to kind of change the action. So that's a basic basketball setup. Baseball, same kind of concept. We're going to have a, a, a camera behind the, behind the plate to look at the pitcher. You know, we're going to have the side cameras to catch all the action. And then, you know, we're calling it the hero cam or the home run cam. That's the center field camera that can focus in on the hitter. So it's not dead center. It's got to be to the left or the right of the pitcher. So on the zoom, you're on the other side. But that's the camera that's going to have the guy hitting the big home run, the balls and the strikes and the things like that. So a very good setup here. Four cameras, you know, for, for a baseball game. Now, I know some people will say, you know, we can't get the camera behind the plate. I get that. I think that one's essential for baseball. And I think on the side cameras, once again, those can be fixed PTZ cameras that have a few settings or an actual camera operator. If you're on a big sports field, football, lacrosse, soccer, whatever it is, you know, that's where the field is so big. Typically, all the cameras are on the same side of the field. So typically what you're going to have is cameras that kind of following the action by the goal, the end point, the goal line, the end point, the lacrosse goal, the soccer goal, whatever it is on the edges. And then you're going to have basically your high up center camera. And once again, your hero camera, that hero camera can be on the running back or the quarterback. If it's football, if it's lacrosse, you can be looking at your, your star, your, your star forward or your defenseman. And of course, if it's soccer, you'll be following whoever your striker is or your, or your, your midi, you know, whoever it's going to be. But here are some ideas on, on where you can place your cameras. Now, of course, Wherever you place your cameras is going to be dependent on the access you have to where you can put them. What I mean by that is, is if you can't put the cameras in a certain place because you have no ability to run a wire there or network for NDI, you got to make some compromises sometimes. So these are just general outlines and not rules you have to follow. We want to get you thinking on what you're going to do. But the seed I'm really trying to plan here is to do sports right, you need multiple cameras. And really, whereas a... a, a if you're doing a show like our show or you're doing a, a, a graduation or you're doing a, a theater thing where it's a play or an event like a, a, a band or choir or orchestra, typically that's a three camera shoot. But I think for sports, you really need that fourth camera because it's that extra view that's a little more zoomed in that really makes the show that much more entertaining. The next level I want to talk about is real important, and that's graphics. Now, you know, when we watch TV, uh, what I love doing is, is I, I'm a baseball fan. I grew up, you know, loving the Mets in the 70s. And I love watching these old baseball programs from the 70s and 80s. And one of the things that just cracks me up is how incredibly horrible those graphics look compared to what we use today. And it's really amazing what you could do with those graphics today to make your sporting event better. And what's really cool is not just the graphics, but you could tie your graphics to the color theme of the home team, to put the graphics of the actual logos for your team to your teammates. Some of the graphics can be stored images of your players. So when you bring their stats up, you can have a picture of them with their name. You can really make the show so much more enjoyable and engaging 
by introducing graphics, and the greatest sports graphic of all is, of course, the scoreboard. Now, what we're showing here is a great little cheat on the scoreboard that a lot of people do, and that is, is you can have a fifth camera that does nothing but point at the scoreboard, and then you can pull that scoreboard into a picture in a picture or whatever you want on your show. You can use something like the Yolo box to manually enter your scoreboard. You can have something like a TriCaster with an animated scoreboard or, what, or Wirecast also. And there's a lot of tools out there that are based, basically these little USB devices that can be attached to your scoreboard and then either through a RS-232-422 cable or networking cable can allow you to bring that scoreboard into your TriCaster, your video mixer to bring it to the next level with the live graphics. But the one thing that I will say, if you're going to do sports, multi-camera first, nice graphics second, and then you're really going to step it up when you get that scoreboard in there because that's what sports are. You, know, you want to see the scores of what's there. And the more complex the real-time graphics and score information you can give to your show, the more professional your show is going to look and the more engaging it's going to be for your audience. Now, the golden, taking your high school games to 11 is adding instant replay. And instant replay is something that we have the technology to give you instant replay that's some really cool stuff. And we're going to talk about two systems we have that are available now that are really great. And in fact, Chris Burgos is going to be on the show later from, Net, from New Tech, really going in-depth on how their three-play system works. But the thing I want to stress with instant replay is, you need an instant replay operator. Right now, when we do our show, Adam's my producer. He's producing the show on the TriCaster. He's mixing the cameras. He's bringing up the graphics and stuff like that. If he had to do instant replay at the same time, I think his head might explode. So we really recommend that your operator is an instant replay operator, or you can get a system that's really an instant replay system that really does some basic switching if your goal is really to get replays more. But if you're going to have a complex show with graphics and multiple cameras and instant replay, it's really great to have a, an instant replay operator. But also from a school point of view, that's another area where a student can get experience where on their resume going to colleges or colleges going out into the workforce, they can say, hey, I did instant replay on our basketball games or on our volleyball games or our hockey games or our baseball games. And instant replay operators are, are valuable. You know, it's, it's more and more important. No one's putting on a sporting event with an instant replay operator. I think it's a great way for your students to be able to differentiate their experiences by saying, hey, not only was I a camera operator, not only did I mix the show or do graphics, but I know how to do instant replay. And instant replay with multiple camera angles, instant replaying the same shot, the same segment, that's what it's all about. And Chris is going to go into that a lot when he talks about three play. So the Roland P20 HD is a fantastic way to start with instant replay. It's an affordable unit. It'll allow you to just get, the, get what instant replay is supposed to do, clip building, replays, and things like that. It does slow motion and instant replay. And it's a great way to start. And it's something you can add to any existing system very easily. It's easy to get up there and get going. Call us for pricing. We had a little price increase, I believe, and I, I'm not sure if it's taking hold or it's coming or not, so we didn't want to put the pricing in this, but we will. We do have it available if you give us a shout and give us a call. What I'm going to say is turning it up to 11, what we should all aspire to if we're going to really do sports on a high level is full multi-angle instant replay, and the best system out there that we really love is the new Tech 3 Play system. The 3P1 gives you 1080p, 60 frames. You can bring your clips in via NDI, SDI, whatever you need to get it going. And I can't do it justice. Chris is the man because not only does he know all about it, he, uh, he's operated it, he's done it for some big sporting events and stuff like that, so he's going to get into that. But instant replay is what we really all want to aspire to when we're bringing sports into education. I'm not saying you can get there yet. So maybe what it is is maybe this year's budget you get some multiple cameras and a basic switcher and some PTZ cameras. Maybe the following year you step up and you get yourself a TriCast or a Wirecast gear or something more elaborate. And then maybe the following year you get in the budget for that three-play system. It doesn't all have to happen as one at once, but I think you'll find that the more production quality you can build into your sports productions for education, the more not only is it going to help your program, but it's going to help you get more funding to get bigger and better things for your live sports productions.
Oh, look at that. He popped up on my screen. Do I let him join or do I ask? Okay. Hey, we're live, folks. That happens. Let me get back on my screen. All right. There's not just producing the game. But a major part of doing sports is what happens with that footage afterwards. Because people aren't just going to watch the game. In fact, probably more people will want to watch things like highlight reels or best of reels. Uh, the things that, so what happens is you take your footage from all your cameras, and it's real important if you're doing multi-camera sporting productions that you're recording what we call those ISO streams. That's every camera has its own stream. They should also be recording to a local memory card and when you can also because that camera might have that shot. That's the greatest shot that you ever had of the event that happened. And you might have missed that in your live show. You might not have realized that that cameraman had a better angle on the fumble or the game-saving catch or whatever it was. So... We really, really recommend, A, record all your ISO streams, record every stream that's happening on your cameras. And what can you do after the game? Well, you can create clips of, of your athletes to spotlight their talents, clips that they can put in their own portfolios, they can put on their own, face, their own social media, that you can put on your social media, and those clips can help bring kids to the next game, get your community more engaged in what you're doing. But also, it's real important that your videos become recruitment tools for your best athletes to get rec recruited to whatever the next level is. So if it's a high school, those videos help that kid get recruited by the college teams. If you're a college team, well, that helps that kid get recruited on the pro level, the next level that they want to attain. And if you're a club level team, well, a great way, if you've got a great athlete playing in your club level sports and you could actually showcase that athlete a little bit and make some highlight reels and stuff like that, that may, might get more people to get involved in the program so that you have more athletes coming in to participate as well. So there's a lot of work to do after the game. So if you're going to be doing live sports, you also need to be prepared to do a lot of post-production with those sports. And those clips of your games become the clips you use in future shows because those clips become the B-roll that you bring in. So if your star uh, first baseman hit a grand slam to win the game a week ago, a day ago, in the beginning of the season, well, why not play that clip before he gets up at one of his at-bats? That's how you make your show more interesting. If there was a really great play to win a game, why not show that clip whenever you're, you have some downtime in your football game or your basketball game or whatever it is? So use those clips to become your B-roll as part of your show and also use those highlight reels so that if you're interviewing a coach who's talking about a particular athlete or a particular game, it's not just the talking head of the guy. You can roll those clips in so it becomes more engaging and more interesting. And really, when you have a coach talking about the plays and you've got the plays going beside him and he's referring to the player and the play, it, it, it feels like real TV. It feels like what you're watching on Fox or ESPN. It's amazing how quickly your shows are going to start looking as if they were network-level shows just by three things happening. Having the right gear, having your kids get experience to use it, and using it and using it and using it. Because my rule is my rule of four, and that is if you get the, whatever you get to do your live sports to make it better next year, say, say in September, be prepared that your first two or three games aren't going to look so good. By the fourth game, you're going to be amazed at how much better your productions are as your entire production team that you're using on the show gets more familiar with the gear, more familiar with the camera, more familiar with the sport they're shooting on, more familiar with everything. So that's a video guy's rule of four. That is anytime you're starting something new that's in live video, be it live video sports or a live video show like we do, give yourself four shows to get it right. If you're patient with yourself and you learn as you go, you're only going to get better. All right, that's my time slot now. What do we have coming up today? Well, like I said, we have Chris Burgos coming up from New Tech. He's going to talk about uh, TriCasters and 3Play and Instant Replay. And then after that, we have George from LiveView who's going to talk all about some of the great opportunities that exist for LiveView technology. We use not just the solo product that I went into earlier in the show, but there's LiveView Anytime something's happening in the world, in live sports, be it the World Series, the World Cup, the Olympics, folks are there with Live View beaming that show straight into the Live View cloud and bringing it out to Live View servers throughout the world. So 
Live View's got some amazing technology. The Solo is where it starts. It goes really higher end. Live View can allow you to actually produce remote shows completely. Where you could have a Live View system with a couple of cameras operating in away games that you could still be mixing from your production studio in your high school or your college. Now, I know I'm getting a little complicated. I'm, I, I don't want to steal George's thunder on his show, but I just want to point out just the capabilities that are out there for Live View and their technology for sports and education. All right, and then what do we have? We have one more show coming up on EduStream, March 15th, and that's going to be all about PTZ cameras and auto tracking. I really think in 2022, one of the big things we're going to see is that these PTZ cameras that everyone bought during the pandemic in order to be able to stream stuff, be it sporting events, education, corporate videos, house of worship, didn't matter. We all had these PTZ cameras. Well, now I think the next phase, what you're going to see is auto tracking. There's going to be different levels of auto tracking, but I think you're going to see auto tracking where now if I'm a teacher in a lecture center, I can auto track it. If I'm shooting a sporting game, a sporting event, you can actually auto track some of the players. Now, Obviously, if you're going to try to auto track on sports, you're going to need more than a basic PTZ camera. You need a camera with like an incredibly smooth and fast reactive head on it. But we sell cameras like that. We sell cameras from Panasonic that are used in live sporting events throughout the country in arenas that people don't even realize it's there that you have access to also. And one of the other things that's super cool is auto tracking has become incredibly more affordable. Whereas last year to get auto tracking was going to cost you $3,000 or more, you're going to see that auto tracking is now available on cameras for under $2,000 and that there's auto tracking software that you can add to your existing cameras that is even more powerful that can open up to let you have one, two, or even three cameras being operated automatically. So that's what I have this for the show. I see Jim's coming in to take over for our next two guests. So I'm going to basically say thank you very much for tuning in. I hope we had over 100 people today. And don't forget, next Tuesday is the last day. And, of course, all these videos will may, be made available in the future on the Video Guys website. So thank you very much for turning into EduStream TV. And, Jim, if you're ready, we're going to go to a commercial. We're going to go to a oh, How do you like that? We're going to go to a commercial. We're getting so good here. We're going to go to a commercial. When we come back, Jim will be standing here, not me. Peace. <laughs>